Why visiting this Philippine island will kill you? It was dubbed the most forbidden island because of what happened in the past. Some locals are even terrified of visiting this island. What makes it so terrifying and what happened on the island? This is a real island, not a fictional one. Locals in the area can confirm that the island is indeed terrifying. It's important to mention this because some people tend to dismiss information as propaganda or fake without thoroughly verifying its accuracy. Some of the country's worst maritime disasters will reveal an interesting and quite disturbing pattern. Many of them happen in the waters around this island. That's why the government had to shut it down and prohibit anyone from coming close to it. Even though it's a touristy area, it has one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. But because it's terrifying, the government had to shut it down. The island has a notorious history of unexplained disappearances and maritime accidents. Ships, fishing vessels, and even aircraft have reportedly vanished without a trace in these waters. Local folklore and numerous anecdotal accounts tell of vessels setting out on clear days only to disappear, never to be seen again. This has instilled a sense of dread and mystery among sailors and local inhabitants. To understand how terrifying this island is, let's look at the country's worst maritime disasters. The world's worst maritime disaster of the 20th century is the tragedy where over 4,300 people died or went missing. On December 20th, 1987, at 6.30, a ship left Tacloban Lady heading to Manila with a planned stop at Catabalugan, Samar. It was set to have made its last radio contact around 8 p.m., though later reports suggested that the ship did not have a radio. At around 10.30 p.m., the ferry was near Dumali Point in the Taplas Strait. A survivor mentioned that the weather was clear but the sea was rough that night. While most passengers were asleep, the ship collided with the MT Vector, an oil tanker traveling from Bataan to Masbate. The Vector was carrying 1.5 million liters of gasoline and other petroleum products owned by Caltex Philippines. When the ships collided, the Vector's cargo caught fire and spread to the Donia Paz. Survivors remembered feeling the impact and hearing an explosion, which caused panic on board. Flames quickly spread throughout the ship, and the sea around it was on fire. Another survivor said that the lights went out shortly after the collision. He also mentioned that there were no life vests available and that the crew was panicking along with the passengers. No one from the crew gave instructions or tried to organize an evacuation. It was later reported that the life jacket lockers were locked. Survivors had to jump off the ship and swim through burning water filled with bodies. Some used suitcases to stay afloat. The Dania Paz sank within two hours of the collision and the Vector sank within four hours. Both ships went down in about 500 meters of shark-infested water in the Tablas Strait. Another disaster happened was the MS Don Juan. About 1 p.m. of April 22, 1980, a jam-packed MS Don Juan of Negros Navigation, carrying at least 1,000 passengers, left Pier 2 at Manila North Harbor. It was bound for Bacolod City. Within the ship are vacationers, students coming home after graduation, or a break in big universities in Manila. At 10.30 p.m., the vessel was traveling beneath a full moon over the calm Tabla Strait, with most of the passengers asleep. The rest were awake 
having a great time with the band at the Ferris Disco. But all of a sudden, it was rammed hard on its port side by oil tanker MT Tacloban City of the Philippine National Oil Company. It left a large gapping hole from its lower deck. The impact jammed most of the cabin doors, sealing the fate of their occupants. Fortunate ones were on the economy class, upper decks and disco goers. It did not take long and Don Juan took in seawater, screaming terrified and wailing passengers, even without life jackets, jumped to the sea. The crew frantically handed out life jackets and tried to put them into lifeboats. Collapsible lifeboats were released for those already at sea. But time was too short. In 15 to 20 minutes, Dan Juan was swallowed by the sea. With it were dozens still trapped in cabins and bunks, crew members who held to their posts and those already in lifeboats, but were never released on time. Hundreds of survivors thrashed and called for help in the shark infested waters. The crew of the tanker Tacloban blocked out as many survivors as they could and those killed instantly by the impact. After two hours, another tanker, empty Laog City, arrived at Don Juan's distress call and took the remaining survivors and more corpses. Smaller ships and fishing vessels within its vicinity also came and helped. The most recent incident happened on June 21st, 2008. The Princess of the Stars departed from Manila on June 20, heading to Cebu City. Despite Typhoon Frank hitting Samar Island that same day, the ferry was allowed to sail because it was considered large enough to handle the storm's outskirts. But Frank's unexpected change of direction put the ferry in serious danger. By midday on June 21st, the ferry sent a distress signal and ready contact was lost at 12.30 p.m. The mayor of San Fernando sent a speedboat confirming that the ferry had a hull in the hull and was partly submerged. According to four survivors who swam to nearby Cebuan Island, the ferry did not malfunction but encountered rough seas of Rambolon's coast. At 11.30 a.m., passengers were told to put on life jackets and 15 minutes later, the captain ordered everyone to abandon ship. By midday, the ship began to tilt. The survivors saw many people jumping into the water, some reaching life rafts, but many were without life jackets. They noted that the crew seemed more focused on saving themselves than helping the passengers. Another tragic incident happened on the island was MB Gem. On August 6, 2022, the motor banker MB Gem encountered a tragic accident off the coast of Ramblon. The boat, which was carrying passenger from Ramblon to Cebuan Island, capsized due to strong winds and rough seas caused by an unexpected weather disturbance. Rescue operations were immediately launched by the Philippine Coast Guard. Despite their efforts, several passengers were reported missing, while others were rescued and brought to safety. At least four Japanese ships are said to be victims of the Rambolan Triangle. Musashi, Japan's second most powerful battleship, and two destroyers, Nagato and Mayiko, were sunk by Allied planes during the Battle of Cebuan Sea. Meanwhile, the Yamato was heavily damaged there and eventually sunk when it arrived in Okinawa. Locals speak of a golden ghost ship that appears before disasters. They say it was seen just before Don Juan collided with a tanker. Some believe that Don Juan crashed because it tried to avoid this ghost ship. The ghost ship is said to be manned by Lolo Amang, who is like the Filipino version of the Flying Dutchman.